It has been over four years since WWE presented the first show of their long and lucrative partnership with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The Greatest Royal Rumble featured legends making rare in-ring appearances and major title matches and was headlined by a 50-man rumble, the largest in WWE history. A WrestleMania title shot was not on the line, rather pride and a massive trophy and ugly belt, yay. But the match certainly intrigued on paper. It also, looking back at it, intrigues one to go through the list of 50 entrants and think about where they all ended up in the weeks, months and years afterwards. Four years might not seem like a long time, but the careers of some of those involved have changed dramatically since and of the 50, only a fraction remain in WWE today. Mason Ryan, Stevie Ray, Earthquake, Alundra, Blaze, Norman Smiley, Zach Gowan, Bam Bam Bigelow, Ahmed Johnson, Tory Wilson, Buff, Bagwell, Robert Gibson, Dave Taylor, Terry Taylor, and Godfather's Homes. Dwayne Gill, Adam Bomb, Michael Hayes, Cor Von, S.A. Rios, Jim and I, the manager from Kai and Ty, Jim Powers, Francine, Jack Swagger, Mean Gene, Fatchick Thriller, Duke the Dumpster, Oklahoma Manta! What happened to that wrestler? Someone main eventing, which leaves me lamenting. What happened to that wrestler? Some since long forgotten, but their memories live on. Daniel Bryan The undisputed MVP of the Greatest Royal Rumble, Daniel Bryan lasted a whopping 1 hour, 16 minutes and 5 seconds, setting a Rumble record in the process, before being booted out by Big Cass. It's all the more impressive when you consider D. Bry had only just come out of in-ring retirement a couple of weeks earlier at WrestleMania 34. The American Dragon continued working for WWE for another three years, letting his contract expire so that he could join All Elite Wrestling a company that wasn't even around when the Greatest Royal Rumble went down. Brian Danielson is currently aligned with John Moxley, Wheeler Yuta, and William Regal in the menacing Blackpool Combat Club. Dolph Ziggler Dolph Ziggler stuck around for just over 20 minutes and scored three eliminations before he was chucked out by Kurt Angle. The show-off has, rather incredibly, been a WWE television fixture since 2006. One of their longest tenured performers on the active roster, Ziggler these days can usually be found tagging with Dirty Dog's partner, Robert Roode. Earlier this year, he had a short run with the NXT title. Sin Cara The first person eliminated after barely lasting 75 seconds, Sin Cara likely knew he was in the autumn of his WWE career at this point, as he was there to simply make up the numbers. After an age of being injured, jobbed out, or otherwise not used at all, he handed in his release, prompted by then Raw Executive Director Paul Heyman telling him that the Sin Kara character was dead. WWE granted the release in December of 2019. He has since wrestled sporadically on the Mexican indie scene as Cinta de Oro. Curtis Axel Another one brought to Saudi Arabia to be a warm body and little more, Curtis Axel entered fourth but was the second person eliminated, sticking in there for two whole minutes before Mark Henry sent him to the showers. Amazingly, Axel and Bo Dallas as the B team would be given a 50 day run with the Raw Tag Team titles not to too long after this. Once they dropped the belts, however, they pretty much dropped off the radar too. Axel was released in April of 2020, but returned to the company as a backstage producer two years later. Mark Henry The world's strongest man was only in the match for three and a half minutes, scoring three eliminations in that time before he himself was bundled over by Ziggler and Bryan. Incredibly, the Greatest Royal Rumble is Henry's last match to date. Even more incredibly, the Hall of Famer left WWE, where he was an assumed lifer, in order to join AEW in May of 2021. Henry works as a commentator and coach for Tony Khan's promotion. Mike Kanellis Mike Kanellis' WWE career didn't pan out the way that he or wife Maria had probably hoped, and it was really no surprise to see his name, or Maria's sadly, on the list of those first cut during the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. The miracle Mike Bennett has been a busy boy since mind, working for various promotions including Ring of Honor, Impact, and the NWA. Hiroki Sumi 
When this bloke showed up, unexplained and from seemingly out of nowhere, I didn't know who he was, obviously, but I did know that I absolutely loved him. He was in there for just less than a minute, but his appearance got everyone talking. So, just who is Hiroki Sumi? Well, he is a former sumo wrestler who apparently at least knows Shinsuke Nakamura. Sumi was allegedly randomly inserted here in his only ever match because the Saudi crown prince wanted Yokozuna in the mix and, well, you know, Victor and Connor of the Ascension. Long on the main roster periphery, the Ascension lasted, combined for less than three and a half minutes, and scored zero eliminations. Victor and Connor were duly released by WWE in December of 2019. Victor has since returned to the indie scene and also hosts the Wrestling with the Struggle podcast. Connor, meanwhile, does the indie thing and also acts as a trainer at the Wrestling Lab School in Florida. Kofi Kingston. Just a little under a year after the Greatest Royal Rumble, the ultra consistent Kofi Kingston finally won the big one when he defeated Daniel Bryan to become WWE Champion at WrestleMania 35. It was the culmination of many years of hard graft for the New Day man and just reward for one of WWE's most well-liked performers. Kingston is still around back in the tag team scene with Xavier Woods. Tony Nese 205 Live mainstay Tony Nese was released by the company in June of 2021. The former Cruiserweight Champion has since signed with AEW and continues to wrestle on the indies too. He is absolutely fine, the shredded idiot. Dash Wilder and Scott Dawson. Former NXT, Raw, and SmackDown tag team champion Dash Wilder followed revival partner Scott Dawson out the door, the pair of them jointly requesting their releases in early 2020. Concerned more with legacy and preserving the art of tag team wrestling, the revival turned down a hefty contract after becoming concerned about their creative direction in WWE. Now all elite, FTR have once again established themselves as one of the absolute best tandems in the entire industry. Hornswoggle. The little bastard made his grand return for what is, to date, his last WWE match. Only in for a minute, Hornswoggle at least helped manage to get rid of Dash Wilder in the short time he was involved. Hornswoggle is still quite active on the indie scene, popping up here, there, and pretty much everywhere. Primo and Epico Cologne. The Colognes had a cracking run in WWE, all things considered, enjoying 13 years of highs, lows, and dodgy gimmicks before their releases during the pandemic. Both men have since returned to the WWC in their native Puerto Rico, where they are two of the promotion's biggest stars. Xavier Woods Xavier Woods may not have attained WWE title success like his New Day brethren Kofi Kingston and Big E, but he has had one hell of a career regardless. The most recent King of the Ring is still going strong with Kingston, while outside of the ring he runs the very popular Up Up Down Down YouTube channel. What's that, Woods? You want a cultaholic crossover? Well, now that you mention it. Bo Dallas. Another who you may have always felt was one round of cutaways from being future endeavoured, Bo Dallas finally received his marching orders in the summer of 2021. He hasn't done anything in wrestling since, opting instead to pursue interests outside of the business, though he has claimed that he is not done with the grap game. The former NXT champion lives on a farm with Liv Morgan, which sounds like a pretty alright way to live a life, to be honest. Kurt Angle. The Olympic gold medalist and WWE Hall of Famer racked up three eliminations before he himself was thrown out after a commendable eight-minute cameo. Angle retired from in-ring competition at WrestleMania 35 and has since shown up here and there for this and that, but these days is more focused on projects away from the business, such as his podcast and health snacks company. Gold Dust. The veteran Dustin Runnels requested his WWE release about a year after the Greatest Royal Rumble, the bizarre one having been on the shelf for some time following double knee surgery. He soon joined his brother Cody in AEW, the pair of them contesting an absolute barn burner of a match at Double or Nothing 2019. The Natural has continued to play his part since, both in the ring and behind the scenes as a coach. Outside of AEW, he is the owner and head trainer of the Rhodes Wrestling Academy. Elias Elias looked for a time like he was on the brink of superstardom before he mysteriously vanished into thin air. It was the darndest thing. His family legacy is being continued these days by his younger brother Ezekiel, a recent addition to the Raw roster. 
Luke Gallows. Luke Gallows was one of the first cut due to the pandemic, and boy was he and his also released tag team partner Carl Anderson not happy about it. Though the Good Brothers were stewing about being let go just a few months into their recently signed very lucrative multi-year deals, they didn't let it stop them making a living, least of all the hustling Gallows. The Big LG has worked for Impact, AEW and New Japan, as well as a plethora of indies since being cut loose, and he also runs the Lariato Pro outfit in Georgia. Rhino Had Rhino not opted against re-signing with WWE when his contract expired in the summer of 2019, you would have to think that he would have been one of the unfortunate souls being given his P45 when the pandemic hit. But luckily for the Man Beast, who managed to last a decent 16 minutes in the Rumble, he got out on his own terms and has been able to make a real difference as a member of the Impact Wrestling roster. Drew Gulak 205 Live mainstay Drew Gulak lasted less than 205 seconds before he was sayonara by NXT's Tucker Knight. Despite the occasional mini-push, most notably when working with Daniel Bryan, Gulak's WWE career has been one of largely 24-7 titles seen purgatory in recent times. Of late, the former Cruiserweight champion has switched his focus to being a backstage interviewer for the SmackDown brand. Tucker Knight Tucker Knight had a good thing going for him in the form of his heavy machinery tag team with Otis. While Otis has gotten his share of main roster roster breaks, including a memorable storyline with Mandy Rose and an alliance with Chad Gable, Knight wasn't afforded the same luxury once their team was split up in the draft. Released in April of 2021, Tucker as Levi Cooper has done a few indie matches but has otherwise been fairly quiet. Bobby Roode The glorious one has been in WWE for, can you believe it, six years now and has managed to cram quite a lot into that time. He's won the NXT title, the US title and both sets of tag teams team titles, which is pretty good going for someone who was already in his 40s and very much had TNA Guy written all over him when he came in. He put in a canny shift at the Greatest Royal Rumble, going 17 minutes and 44 seconds, during which he scored two eliminations. Still with the company, Rude is essentially a handy utility player and his team with Dolph Ziggler do their job well. Fandango. Who here remembers Fandangoing? Da 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 da. Oh, I'm such a laugh. Once WWE had given up on Fandango becoming a bona fide singles star, he settled into his groove as a fun mid-card act and formed an entertaining team with Tyler Breeze. His 15-year WWE journey, counting the age he spent in developmental, came to an end in the summer of 2021. Dirty Dango has been active on the indies since and has worked with the NWA while also working a nice house-flipping side hustle. Chad Gable The talented and often underutilized Chad Gable Gable was in a bit of a transition phase here, but don't worry, he would soon transform into Shorty G. Credit where it's due, Gable got through his basketball shorts phase and has been a regular presence on WWE TV alongside Alpha Academy partner Otis. And fingers crossed, it's just a matter of time before he fully breaks out. Rey Mysterio The Lucha Goat first returned to WWE in the actual Royal Rumble four months earlier, then popped up again here ahead of his full-time return to the company about six months later. He's been with WWE since, solidifying his legacy as one of the best to ever do it, while also getting to tag with his son, Dominic. When he eventually hangs them up, and hopefully that's not for some time yet, he should be the first name on the Hall of Fame ballot. Mojo Rawley My playboy did all right in the Greatest Royal Rumble, eliminating Breezango and surviving for about nine minutes before he exited the contest. Mojo was released by WWE in April of 2021 after months of inactivity. He currently runs a talent marketing group and acts as a host for TMZ TV, but hasn't wrestled much since 2020. Part of that might be down to a long and life-threatening battle he had with COVID-19. Stay height and stay safe, buddy. Tyler Breeze 16 seconds of ring time for what was probably a 16-hour flight from the United States to Jeddah. I hope the payoff was worth it, Tyler. It definitely was. Breeze was released alongside Fandango in June of 2021 and hasn't worked anywhere else since. He is instead focused on recovering and running the Flatback Pro Wrestling School, which he owns and operates alongside AEW's Sean Spears. Big E 
Big E got 14 minutes to shine and eliminated Tucker before he himself was eliminated. Always someone with main event potential, the New Day man finally won the WWE title in 2021. His run, however, was a bit of a disappointment before he dropped it to Brock Lesnar. You wouldn't bet against him coming back and having another much more memorable run further down the road, but he will first have to recover from the serious neck injury which is currently keeping him out of action. Carl Anderson other smaller Festus was let go during the first round of COVID-related budget cuts and has been very outspoken about his former employer in the time since. He's found plenty of work, mostly alongside Gallows in Impact, AEW, and New Japan. He and Gallows also host the Talk and Shop podcast and associated live events. Apollo Crews Titus Worldwide member Apollo Crews was treading water on the main roster about the time of the Greatest Royal Rumble, where he eliminated Chad Gable before being tossed by Randy Orton after about three and a half minutes. Since this show, Crews has had reigns with the United States and Intercontinental titles and has undergone a gimmick change, but it still feels as though he and WWE are only scratching the surface when it comes to his enormous potential. Roderick Strong Another NXT man, Roderick Strong, who was allowed to eliminate Rhino is still with the third brand, though he's supposedly not as happy as he once was, perhaps due to the departures of his undisputed era teammates. Though Strong has reportedly requested his release in the past, he is still on the books and looks set to see out his contract while leading the diminished Diamond Mine stable. Randy Orton Four eliminations in 10 minutes wasn't bad going for WWE's Mr. Consistency. Randy Orton is, of course, still with WWE, as he likely will be until he decides to call it a day. Generally regarded as one of the very best of the modern era, the Viper has been revitalized in recent times due to his team with Riddle. Orton celebrated 20 years on main roster television, an incredible feat earlier this year. Heath Slater Poor Heath was left drifting aimlessly when Rhino decided to pursue other avenues, and it was not a total shocker to see his name on the first list of COVID cuts. He debuted for Impact not long after his no-compete expired, but unfortunately soon suffered an injury that would keep him sidelined for an age. Heath came back, however, and has since worked for Impact and on the indies. Babatunde Another one of those who-the-hell-is-that bloke entrants, the giant Babatunde had only really appeared on NXT live events prior to getting the nod for the Greatest Royal Rumble. The former American football player emerged a year later during the ill-fated Raw Underground experiments, but has found his niche seconding Apollo Crews as Commander Aziz. Baron Corbin Baron Corbin looks a lot different than he did at the Greatest Royal Rumble, where he managed three eliminations in a shade over seven minutes. He is still one of WWE's most effective heels mind, four plus years and several gimmick and image changes since. Titus O'Neil It all seems so simple on paper. Fly to Saudi Arabia, put on your gear, warm up, get to the ring without incident, and then put in your five minutes in the rumble before showering, getting dressed, and flying home. What should have been a relatively routine piece of business turned into a legacy-altering evening for Titus O'Neil, who shockmastered himself into wrestling history with the absolute funniest botch that will ever happen. Titus still works for WWE, though he doesn't wrestle too much nowadays, doing charity and community work instead. His efforts in those fields earned him a WWE Hall of Fame Warrior Award in 2021. Dan Matha. Alright, so we've got 49 names already locked in for the 50-man rumble. Shoot, we need one more. Um, how about Dan Matha? Yeah, sure, why not? To be fair to the NXT star, he had been helping out a lot along with Tucker Knight during WWE Saudi Arabian tryouts prior to the Greatest Royal Rumble, and this was likely his reward for those efforts. The artist formerly known as Dorian Mack was released by WWE in April of 2020, the same month he was involved in a bad car accident. He vowed to continue his wrestling career, but unfortunately hasn't wrestled since, at least as far as I can see. Judging by his social profiles, he's really into cryptocurrency, so I'm sure that's going well for him. Braun Strowman 
To show you how high WWE were on Braun Strowman at this time, they not only had him win the Greatest Royal Rumble, but also had him eliminate a record 13 people en route to doing so. How incredible then that they would gladly set him free just a few years later. The release of The Monster Among Men, a main eventer and former Universal Champion, was one of the cuts that really announced nobody is safe to the rest of the WWE roster. Braun is currently doing the indies and is in the process of trying to control his own narrative. Take that, you woke marks! Ty Dillinger Ty Dillinger was one of the many who quickly ran into a Strowman-shaped wall, ensuring that the Perfect 10 didn't even make it to 30 seconds in the match. Clearly, the man himself didn't see his fortunes changing anytime soon as he requested his WWE release in February of 2019. As Sean Spears, he now competes for AEW and also runs the Flatbacks Wrestling School with Tyler Breeze. Kurt Hawkins Taking into consideration the fact that he was then bang in the middle of a record-breaking losing streak, the odds of Kurt Hawkins changing his luck in a field of 50 superstars wasn't great. Indeed, Hawkins was chucked out almost instantly by Braun. Kurt eventually broke his losing streak in grand fashion when he and fellow longtime loser Zack Ryder won the tag straps at WrestleMania 35. And that was the major highlight of a WWE career that came to an end, at least for now, with his April 2020 release. As Brian Myers, you can find him wrestling for Impact and on various indie shows, as well as hosting the major wrestling figure podcast with the former Zack Ryder, Bobby Lashley. Lashley's WWE restart took some time to get going, and there were some bumps along the road, but boy did he come good in the end. Bobby is still with WWE and often finds himself in the world title picture. Much deserved. The Great Carly. You know, I'm starting to think there's something to this impress them with the sheer size philosophy that WWE are purported to have when entering new markets. How else do you explain the re-emergence of the massively useless, but according to the poppy got, massively over Great Carly? This was the Punjabi Playboy's first WWE match since 2014 and, to date, his last. Lashley and Strowman got rid of him within half a minute to prevent him from doing any harm. Carly currently runs a wrestling school in India. I repeat, the great Carly runs a wrestling school. Kevin Owens there was some doubt as to whether Kevin Owens would re-sign with Vince McMahon or leave to try his luck in AEW once his last contract ran out. KO stuck with WWE and was rewarded with a Dream WrestleMania main event match with Stone Cold Steve Austin. Good choice, Kev. Shane McMahon Shane McMahon may not have won the greatest Royal Rumble, but the chairman's son would soon be back in Saudi Arabia later in the year in order to officially be crowned the best wrestler in the world! So, there's that. Shane's last WWE involvement was in the 2022 Royal Rumble, after which he was reportedly sent home due to backstage issues, including clashes with producers and other match participants regarding the bout's layout. His on-screen WWE future remains unclear, while he retains no official backstage role or corporate title. Shelton Benjamin The ageless Shelton Benjamin is still on WWE's books. His veteran talent is used primarily to work with other other less experienced opponents and typically put them over. Shelty B does it as well as anyone. Big Cass The greatest runner-up looked like he had an incredibly bright WWE future before it all unravels just a couple of months after this event. Big Cass's WWE tenure ended in infamy after he was released following a string of backstage incidents and general behavioural issues. It came to light later that the seven-footer was dealing with addiction issues and depression which, thankfully, he seemed to have overcome. Clean and sober and looking better than ever, Cass as W. Morrissey wrestles for Impact and on the Indies and made an appearance for AEW earlier this year. You would have to think that another WWE run is pretty likely. Chris Jericho Last but not least was Chris Jericho making his final WWE appearance before signing with AEW in early 2019. Le Champion was the first person to win the AEW world title and has been an ever present presence since. He is also a rock star, podcast host, and leather pants collector.